Technology is improving the efficiency of the humanitarian response, but what else is really needed? For more, let's hear from Louise Bloom of Oxfam International. Louise, you're developing a new type of software called Helios for aid relief. How really does that work? For Oxfam specifically, we've um, implemented um, the solution in about 19 locations. So that means training on the new procedures around planning all the way to distribution and the procurement and warehousing in between. So giving a wider view of our supply chain. So yeah, so the different um, benefits we're getting is the visibility of um, the supplies and assets and materials in those countries. Um, less wastage because you can, you've got that visibility, you can transfer leftover materials to different projects. Um, yeah, better management information to make better decisions about our projects. Where did this idea really come from to develop Helios? The discussions about starting that project actually were stimulated by the tsunami where actually there was lack of coordination and not much visibility of what stocks or materials or food were available um, across different NGOs. So the Helios project has almost been an outcome of the discussions or lessons learned during that time. How is Oxfam working with other new technology like social media? Oxfam as an organisation uses social media very actively for fundraising. So I think we're quite um, fortunate in the sense that we have quite a wide fundraising base. So we have um, shops, charity shops in the UK which bring in a certain amount. We have lots of campaigning work and we use social media for the, to remain, maintain the contact really with our supporters um, and build on campaigns and build our networks that way. In terms of fundraising from the public, that's, um, it's a really useful tool. And then we obviously have fundraising from institutional donors and governments, so kind of separate. You've developed new responses to the disasters in East Africa and West Africa. How do you really get aid relief to those regions now? We've been looking at um, assessing the markets to best make the best decisions about our pro projects and how to um, um, achieve sort of more sustainable livelihoods and sustainable food delivery. So that might mean, it might mean that some food aid has to be delivered directly if the markets really can't support the essential need for the targeted or affected population. But it might also mean that from the market's assessments we can see that there is a market and there is still f some food available for the targeted population. So actually a better response might be to give them cash grants or vouchers to go and buy those, purchase those goods through local traders. So you're helping development with this new approach? So that's the aim that we're not doing um, harm by just injecting food directly into the market um, and bypassing, kind of bypassing the local traders. That actually if we assess the market better then we can make a more informed decision about what the best response is for that situation and therefore hoping that it's, it is a more sustainable response and you're affecting the markets in a more positive way. How high tech have you really become? I can talk more from, a, from our logistics team perspective rather than an overall response. I mean, there are different um, technologies that are used across the sector. So Relief Web and WFP do use things that are shared. So there are those um, tracking devices and information updates which are shared between the clusters actually. So again, where the cluster system comes in useful to share information. Um, so that's relatively high tech. Um, our Helios system is an example of our soft a software that we're using. Um, another example that we have from logistics is vehicle tracking. So we've got live tracking in um, our vehicles to help monitor speeds and increase safety um, and also have better tracking of our vehicles. Um, there's new technologies which are being investigated but we haven't um, gone into or haven't invested in yet um, in looking at distribution um, to beneficiaries, so registering beneficiaries um, and distri doing distributions, whether it's food or non-food items in an emergency that's often, I mean traditionally it's very administrative and paper-based, so we're looking at different technologies that could help that. So we haven't started yet, but other people in the sector, other organisations in the sector have um, started doing that. Um, and there's a cash learning partnership um, project which is um, a cross-agency um, organisation looking at different um, cash distribution techniques and different te um, techniques for distribution and they've done some research in the different technologies available. So there's lots of research kind of going on and testing and piloting of those types of things. Louise Bloom of Oxfam International, we thank you very much for joining NC at Knowledge.